Okay, so this is a short video lesson to accompany the reading. Uh, this is regarding how we might incorporate friction uh, into our circular motion dynamics. So when a car uh, rounds a curve, there's got to be a force towards the center of that circle, of which that curve is an arc. Uh, the, if the road is flat, that force is supplied by friction. Now, uh, take a look at this picture. If the frictional force is insufficient, the car is going to travel in nearly a straight line, and that's uh, shown quite easily by uh, this, uh, these skid marks that uh, as a car is making this turn here, if they can make that turn, no problem, they uh, travel that curve here, but if they uh, go a little bit too fast, or maybe try to take that turn a little bit too sharply, um, if the frictional force is insufficient, they tend to travel in a straight line, and we've seen the, that kind of demonstration quite a bit in class. Now, as long as the tires do not slip, the friction would be static friction. Uh, if the tires do start to slip, that friction would be kinetic, and that's bad for two reasons. One, the kinetic frictional force is always smaller than the static frictional force. And the other uh, reason, it may not be as obvious, but it's actually the uh, reason that I think is more, uh, more dangerous. The static frictional force can point in any direction, and that includes towards the center of the circle. Kinetic friction can only oppose the direction of motion, so all the kinetic frictional force can do is slow you. It cannot provide any turning force. So if your car starts to slide during a turn, you basically lose all control of steering. All you get to do is, is slow down. That's what kinetic friction does. Static friction can point in any direction. So remember, static friction is a force that tries to oppose the initiation of sliding. So it can uh, act any direction that uh, your car is asking for. Kinetic friction only opposes motion. Now, uh, I'd like to go through an example with you, show you how we might incorporate uh, our static friction model and perhaps our kinetic friction model with um, circular motion dynamics. So here we have a car, 15, uh, 50 kilogram, rounds a turn on a level road. If the car is going to complete the turn without slipping, I'd like to determine the maximum speed the car can have to complete that turn. We're going to assume the coefficient of static friction is about 0.75, uh, and the radius of the turn is about 85 meters. Now, these values here are pretty typical for uh, highway, highway roads, so for maybe an on-ramp or an off-ramp, about an 85 meter radius, and 0.75 is a pretty good coefficient of static friction for rubber on uh, dry concrete. So let's go, go ahead and start with a little picture here off to the side. So let's go ahead and make a curve here that a car is going to be uh, completing uh, for this turn. And so here we have sort of a, an aerial view. The car is traveling this way and it's got to be uh, going through this particular curve. Now um, we know that its tangential velocity would be this way here and we know that its, uh, its centripetal acceleration would be inward. So let's do that with a different color. Its centripetal acceleration would be inward uh, and tangential velocity sort of along that tangent line. Now uh, those would represent the uh, velocity and acceleration vectors uh, for that car. Let's go ahead and uh, look at this thing from the side. I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw a picture here sort of looking at the car from the rear. And uh, what we would see is that we have, uh, from a force uh, diagram standpoint, we'd have a weight force that's acting down. We'd have a uh, normal force that's acting upward. Uh, these two forces are, um, are balanced, uh, producing in, in a state of equilibrium vertically. Uh, those are not centripetal forces. The centripetal force is actually a force that is pointed inward, so towards the center of the circle. And uh, that force, again, is caused by static friction. Now, if we're interested in the maximum speed that the car uh, can have uh, with uh, to complete that turn, then really what I'm interested in uh, is let's figure out what the maximum uh, amount of static frictional force is uh, so that we can create uh, or make that turn as fast as possible. Now, again, if you remember, uh, we've looked at some friction graphs here. And so if we look at uh, the frictional force that's acting uh, in relation to the applied force, we saw a graph that looks something like this. So when I'm applying my brakes, I would uh, go through sort of a one-to-one -one ratio between applied force and frictional force. This is the static region again. Uh, we can only operate so high in the static region. Once we exceed that maximum static amount, we slip down to the kinetic frictional force. So really we're interested in uh, trying to determine uh, if we operate right at that point, what is the maximum speed that we can operate uh, without slipping. So here's our FVD, and uh, we're going to go ahead and use Newton's second law. 
uh, to describe that kind of motion. Uh, so some of the forces is m times a. We're dealing with radial or centripetal forces. Uh, we see that there's only one force that's acting centripetally. That's the uh, maximum static frictional force. And uh, that would be equal to uh, m. Since I'm looking for the maximum speed, let's go ahead and use this version of the equation for centripetal acceleration. Uh, we know that static frictional force, uh, the maximum static frictional force, is related to the normal fo force through this equation. And in uh, this case here, we see that the uh, the normal force and the weight force are in fact equal, so we can go ahead and replace F sub n with the equation for weight. And uh, let's see, that would be equal to m b tangential squared over r. And sure enough, we get to the point where we see the mass again reduces. And uh, since I'm looking for the uh, for the maximum speed, I'm looking for v tangential. Let's go ahead and write that over here. Uh, v tangential squared would be equal to mu sub s times g times r, and so v tangential would be the square root of mu sub s times g times r. And so uh, again, we have a, a, a variable solution here. Notice that uh, the masses ended up reducing out. Uh, this solution would be valid would be valid for any uh, kind of uh, car making a turn where the only force that's pointed inward is uh, static friction. So for let's go ahead and plug in some numbers for this particular problem. Oh, we said mu was 0.75, uh, g 9.8, and our radius of curvature here, uh, 85 meters, uh, gives us a speed of about 25 meters per second. So any faster than that, and they're asking the car is asking to uh, have more inward static frictional force than is allowed. And if we go faster than that, then we're going to end up uh, riding down in this kinetic region. And we simply would then uh, travel in the direction that we are traveling, uh, just sort of slowing our rate of motion. Uh, so does the answer depend at all upon the mass of the car? And, and it doesn't. And that's uh, something that is not intuitively obvious. Uh, a lot of times people think that if the car is heavier, then I have more frictional force. And that is true, but that greater frictional force acting on a greater mass would produce the same uh, overall acceleration, no different than really if I take a bowling ball and a basketball and drop them. The bowling ball is certainly heavier, but a greater amount of force acting on a greater mass produces the same acceleration. Same idea here. Okay, so I think uh, that should be it for this particular lesson and uh, a little uh, video lesson to go along with your reading regarding how we might apply uh, the frictional model to uh, circular motion dynamics.